you are looking at what is, without question, the single most influential volume in the history of the English language. For 400 years, it has inspired, ennobled, enlightened, and confused. It has been used to justify unspeakable horrors and has guided and comforted untold millions. The King James Bible is undoubtedly, I think, the greatest work on prose ever written in the English. But improbable as it may seem, this astounding literary achievement was a work of compromise created for reasons that were not only theological, but political as well. Britain, the dawn of the 17th century. It was a glorious time in a glorious land. The Spanish Armada had been defeated, and for the first time in history, England and Scotland were united under a single ruler. It was a time of prosperity, learning, and letters. William Shakespeare was at his peak. The philosopher Francis Bacon was perfecting the scientific method. The people believed that God had chosen their new king, 36-year-old James I, to unite the realm and lead it to greatness. But curiously, the people could not agree on much else about communications from the Almighty. Officially, according to the Church of England, the familiar 23rd Psalm began this way. God is my shepherd. Therefore, I can lack nothing. He will cause me to repose myself in pasture full of grass, and he will lead me unto calm waters. To the large and powerful group of Puritans, it said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to rest in green pasture, and leadeth me by the still waters. And to the Catholic minority, it said, Dominus reget me, et nihil mihi de erit, in locu pasque ibi me connocavit, et super aquam refectionis educavit me. The distinction between a shepherd that leads one beside calm waters and a ruler who puts someone out to pasture may seem minor today. But this was England and disagreements over scripture and religion had been known to get quite heated. When James I became the King of England in 1603, it had been many years since anyone had been persecuted for possession of an English-language Bible. However, politics and religion were hopelessly commingled. And it is no exaggeration to say that the fate of the kingdom and thousands of lives were on the line when James was approached about commissioning a new authorized translation of the Bible. There were three main versions of the Bible in use by the English-speaking people at the time, the Latin Vulgate, compiled by St. Jerome in the early 5th century, was the official version of the Bible, sanctioned by the Roman Catholic Church. Caritas patiens est, benigna est, caritas non aimulatur, non agit perperam, non inflatur, non est ambitiosa, non quaerit quae sua sunt, non inritantur, non cogit malum. Although the Latin was still used for church services and formal occasions, the Reims New Testament, a church-authorized English translation of the Vulgate, was readily available for private study. Charity is patient, is kind. Charity envieth not, dealeth not perversely, is not puffed up, is not ambitious, seeketh not her own, is not provoked to anger thinketh no evil. The Reformation was not a peaceful process in England. 
and 50 years before the ascension of King James, Queen Mary began a series of persecutions which drove many Protestant leaders out of the country. A number of them took refuge in Geneva, Switzerland, where under the guidance of the theologian and reformer John Calvin, they created their own translation of the Bible. Love suffereth long. It is bountiful. Love envieth not. Love doth not boast itself. It is not puffed up. It seeketh not her own things. It is not provoked to anger. It thinketh not evil. The distinction between the words love and charity was a major point of contention among believers. The earliest manuscripts of the New Testament used the Greek word agape, for which there is no direct English equivalent. The Catholic scholar Thomas More had argued that salvation depended in part on the believer's works. Thus, translating agape as charity implied the need for good actions. Protestants, like the 16th century translator William Tyndall, believed that redemption was a matter of faith alone, and therefore love was the better choice. The Geneva Bible was a detailed work that built on the translation by Tyndall and indirectly Martin Luther. These translations referenced much older Greek and Hebrew manuscripts rather than Jerome's Latin Vulgate. However, the Geneva Bible was often criticized for its Calvinistic interpretation. You, you, you can't translate the Bible, quote-unquote, scientific. You can't translate it um, without, um, without certain preconceptions and certain uh, biases, and, and, um, and we shouldn't pretend that you can. Everything about this volume was designed for personal study. It was usually printed in easy-to-read Roman type and included maps and diagrams. It was about half the size of most Bibles and was printed in a simple and less expensive style. Perhaps most significantly, it also included what the translators termed 